The addition of a rudder on a kayak can aid in directional control, especially in wind and certain sea conditions, and aid in steering while kayak fishing or sailing. This step-by-step -step tutorial, along with the kit instructions, will guide you through the installation. These instructions are for rudder-ready boats. Many models made after 2009 came from the factory rudder-ready, meaning the vinyl cable tubes and some of the deck hardware was already in place. We'll show the installation of these tubes and hardware for those with older models on another video. We'll be installing the rudder on a Tsunami 140. Though all sit inside models, the procedure is similar. The rudder kit you need for your boat will be dependent on the model. These are the tools you'll need. First step is installing the rudder bracket at the stern of the kayak. Remove the two filler screws and set aside. With this raised stop pin facing up, align the bracket with the holes and mount using the two quarter inch by five eighths inch long socket head screws and lock washers using the provided hex wrench. Start both screws before tightening. Now we'll install the rudder. Remove the split ring on the rudder post and insert into the bracket. Replace the split ring on the upper hole in the rudder post. Next we'll install the rudder rest tie down. The groove in the stern deck cradles the rudder blade on the deck of the boat when it is not deployed. We'll install a bungee tie down that holds the rudder securely in place when it is not being used. On the sternmost star deck fitting, double thread the 12 inch bungee and tie a loop big enough to capture the blade and hold it down against the deck. Tie stopper knots on each side of the deck fitting. Next we'll install the rudder lift line system. These lines allow you to deploy or uphaul your rudder from the cockpit while underway. Uncoil the black nylon line that's attached to the rudder and lay it out next to the starboard or right hand side of the kayak. Find the three deck recesses and drill five 32nd inch holes in the center of each recess. Secure the round plastic pad eyes with one inch long number 10 32 screws, neoprene washers and cap nuts. Do not tighten. Some models may have one or more of these deck fittings already in place. If so, loosen the cap nuts. Route the line under the pad eyes, aligning the bases so that the notches allow a smooth loop all the way around and then tighten the cap nuts. Make sure one turtle is above and one below the forwardmost pad eye. Now we can adjust the tension of the line so it won't droop and it is not too tight. First, make sure the rudder is centered and locked down. Pull the slack out of both lines so that they are reasonably taut. Now tie temporary knots in the lines so the top turtle is forward of the bottom turtle and they are approximately four to six inches apart. Release the rudder blade and test for smoothness and readjust the knots if necessary. Once you are happy, pull the knots back out of the turtle and cut and melt the ends. Pull the knots back into the turtle and this procedure is done. The rudder articulation is controlled with thin 1 16th inch stainless steel cables running from the foot braces back to the rudder inside of the vinyl tubes that are already in your boat. First remove the black plugs on the cockpit end of the tubes. Next, after uncoiling the cables, at the stern find the small bumps called frog eyes. This is where the vinyl tubes exit the boat.
feed the free end of the cable into the tubing and push forward until it comes out in the cockpit. When the cable is through, pull it forward with a little tug to straighten out the tubing as much as possible. Now remove the split rings and pins from each end of the rudder wings. Place the eyelet on the end of the rudder cable on the top side of the rudder wing and reinsert the pin and secure with the split ring. Next let's swap the slide lock foot braces for keeper foot braces on sliding rails. Using a number 3 Phillips head screwdriver remove and discard the slide lock foot braces. Attach the metal track extrusions to the inside of the hull using quarter inch by 3 8 inch long screws positioned in the holes at the forward end of each extrusion. At the hole closest to the seat attach with quarter inch by 1 half inch long screws. Now let's adjust the cable length. Turn the rudder all the way to the side you will be adjusting first. We'll start with the left or port side. Tape the cable in place. Back in the cockpit, cut the 4 inch piece of shrink tube in half and thread it and two copper ferrules onto the cable. Thread the end of the cable through the hole in the back end of the foot brace rail and through the first brass ferrule. Now replace the slider on the extrusion and carefully line up the back side of the slider with the back side of the extrusion and make sure the cable is snug. Push the ferrule up tight against the foot brace and take a small piece of masking tape and position it right behind the ferrule to hold the cable in place. With this position marked you can now pull the foot brace free and properly crimp the ferrule. A crimper tool works best, but vice grips will also do the trick. The idea is to deform the ferrule enough to hold the cable, but don't destroy it. Once the ferrule is secured, remove the tape and thread the loose end of the cable through the second ferrule and push it up tight against the first. Cut the excess cable off. Pull the second ferrule back and position just over the freshly cut cable end and crimp. Now slide the heat shrink tube over both ferrules and heat with a lighter or heat gun to shrink. A hair dryer will also work. Repeat on the other side making sure they are both in an equal and balanced position. Now give it a test. Make sure the rudder rest tie down is released. It's best to climb aboard where the stern is free. Saw horses or a bank will do. Adjust the foot pegs so you are comfortable and can easily push forward on the foot peg. Now test the uphaul lines pulling the rudder up and down. Drop the rudder down and test the foot pegs on each side. With your feet, balance your foot pegs so they are even and pull the rudder back up. It should land back in the rudder rest. If not, push the appropriate foot forward to center the blade. Always remember to pull forward on the turtle that is closest to the rudder to get it to move opposite of where it is positioned. Now it's time to go test your boat in some calm water and see how the rudder system affects your course of travel. If you are uncomfortable with any of these procedures, please feel free to visit your local Confluence Water Sports dealer for help or contact us.